so welcome to my presentation on we are social beings after all how distributed open source projects handle the need for in-person trust building we've heard a ton of things about how InnoSocial enables remote work i want to pull us a little bit back towards drinking a cup of tea together oh wait a minute it's this way so who am i i'm co-founding director of the InnoSocial commons foundation but I'm also a member of the Apache Software Foundation, and that's where all of my open source um, experience comes from. Plus, I'm open source strategist at OPS AG here in Berlin, in Germany. So let's take a brief look at why companies initially look towards the inner source. We've heard about pe people being motivated to create more efficient development, to open up knowledge sharing, make it better available, but also about bridging organizational boundaries. If you look a bit deeper, we notice that um, InnoSource helps you to understand open source better, like we heard in the Airbus talk just now, where people start looking at what their downstream process looks like, but also enabling colleagues to benefit from participating upstream. But Taking all, looking at the open source way of working, there are a few key asset aspects. There's open collaboration, there's open communication, and there's a separation between contributors and committers and open code review. So in order to benefit from using open source best practices internally, in order to achieve all those goals that we want to achieve, we need to open up how we work. Essentially, what that means is that we generate passive documentation of how we made decisions. We have to make decisions in public or at least company public. And most scary of all, we have to do that in an asynchronous way in a public, written, archived and complete um, com communication medium where everything you've ever written, every little newbie question you've ever asked will be archived and will be searchable in the future. Imagine all of your company communication being publicly archived and searchable within the firewall of your company, including all your new newbie questions, including all your, oh my gosh, I totally got that communication thread wrong. It needs a ton of trust in your organization and in your team for people to do that. And that's why today we are looking into generating more trust within your team and within your organization. Now I will give you half a minute because we only have 15 minutes total to head over to the um, Etherpad where I've added a question for the audience to answer. Just scan the QR code or enter the link above and to tell me on a scale between one to five, how comfortable would you feel receiving mentorship but visible to all of your colleagues in a forum that is archived to, and visible to the entire co uh, corporation, where one means that feels super creepy, and five means it feels you're super com comfortable with doing that. I see pluses being added to the it's totally comfortable. So we have a lot of companies here who build a very good trust model. Giving you a little bit, bit more time to head over to the, to the form because I will have more questions like these in my talk. While you think about that, um, building trust often means having one-on-one -on -one com communications, means having unstructured communications. But if you think about InnoSource projects, they often cross organizational boundaries. What happens when communication crosses organizational boundaries, crosses teams or even units or even subsidiaries? Scheduling meetings together gets a lot harder and work inherently gets asynchronous and inherently that is going to be more remote friendly. Now, giving you again a little bit more time to tell me, do you work mostly remote first? 
Is your team at the office a few days a week or at the office all of the days each week? A lot of remote per people. Nobody in the office so far. Okay. Going back, when, it, when we talk about trust building, there's essentially um, trust building happens on the scale between cultures where when you work together, when we even you achieve goals together, that is when trust is being built between people. But you also have cultures where essentially you do need to make time to have a meal together, to chat over a cup of coffee together and working together doesn't generate that trust. So depending on where you are and depending on where you grew up, you have to make time for either of those ways or if you have a mixed team, you have to make time for both. Now again, heading back to the interactive part, I would like to know how distributed your team is. Do you all work in one city? Are you able to get together by train? Do you have to fly? Or do you even cross several time zones? Quite a few people crossing time zones. So the easiest part is when everyone is in the office every time, their trust building essentially happens on the site. You don't even have to think about it. It happens next to the water cooler, next to the coffee machine. It's on no schedule. It's on no calendar, nowhere. It just happens. As what the benefits of these meetings essentially are, you have a certain level of privacy. Not everyone can listen in. You have a certain level of serendipity. You don't always find the same people next to the water cooler. You also have a certain level of deniability. Like if you have two teams, both teams suffer the same challenges, then both representatives of those teams can say off the record, yeah, we have the same challenge. We do the same stupid stuff. You probably wouldn't do that in writing. And if you think about conferences where you meet, you have, you have communications um, happening semi-parallelly where you have certain groups, um, say for dinner or say um, for the coffee break, and you can essentially bounce back and forth between these groups. However, there's a cost to these synchronous meetings. If everyone needs to be physically in the same location, people need to travel, people need to sleep in a different city, people need to get visas to get to the target location. And then the question comes up of how often do you want to do that? Even if you move stuff to virtual, like we did for the Enosis Summons here, it may mean that some people on your team, if you're distributed across multiple time zones, have to get up early or they have to stay up late to be in, th in that meeting in that time zone. And it may mean that your meeting spans family time. So there's a different type of cost that's being incurred. Now, if you look at how communication happens on a day-to-day -day basis within your team, it happens on a spectrum. It happens between well-structured, easy to link messages, easy to search stuff like, for instance, documentation on a project web page, tickets in an issue tracker. There's also communication happening that is high bandwidth and high, but also has a high time invest and allows for a quick exchange of ideas. And that's typically the informal dinner or moderated workshop where everyone is in the same room or at least in the same virtual room. What InnoSource does, it helps shift communication to the left. It makes it more structured. It makes it more accessible for remote people and for asynchronous communication. Trust, on the other hand, means that you may need to make time explicitly to move communication to the right. Now, how does open source do that? I come from the Apache Software Foundation. What we have is a conference, is like the biggest hammer that we have is a year, yearly or by uh, yearly or twice a year conference that brings people together across the globe, happens twice a week, people on stage, people in the audience. 
we get people on stage, but we also have an interactive setting where we have panels, etc. We get participants active in unconference style sessions where they can co collaborate. We make sure that talks are being recorded and shared afterwards. However, we also make time and space for unstructured communication. So there's a lot of coffee breaks. There's a long lunch break where people can just chat, where they can chat across company borders, where they can figure out, okay, this is the official communication, but really that's what's behind that. Now I understand it. Or where people can hear others um, chat and talk as opposed to just reading messages. What happens also, and what some of my colleagues doing Innosource found very surprising, was that people meet locally. They meet for meetups, they meet over a cup of coffee. It's extremely simple to go to one of my fellow committers who's also located in Berlin to tell them, hey, can we meet for, for breakfast? Yeah, sure, totally. They know the value of meeting in person. They also reach out when they are traveling to figure out who else is living in the travel destination in order to sa save the budget. They also use technology for virtual cups of, of tea. Um, communications that's not triggered by some work problem, but just to catch up with someone. So now head over to question four. Which op options do you see for translating open source trust building options to inner source settings? And now specifically thinking about what you and your company can do in order to increase trust in Innosus teams. Here's a few things that I recommended to my colleagues. Given the current economic situation, all of those suggestions try to be cost sensitive with respect to um, having people meet in person. Um, one of the first suggestions was to bundle business trips. Like if you go to a conference, figure out if there are con colleagues living in the same city. Um, if you do conferences in your headquarter, make sure that you bundle up training um, dates, bundle up meetings and um, team building sessions and piggyback on conferences you already do within your organization and put team meetings next to that. Make sure that um, this bundling doesn't only happen at the team level, but that it's encouraged across the organization so that people remember it and make it easy. Make it easy to extend business trips by a day or two to save people from going back and forth. But also think out of the box. Like I live in Berlin in Germany, which is a large city. Um, we do have central office, but at some point I realized that some of my colleagues actually live fairly close by to where I live. So I made the suggestion to meet for lunch or for breakfast, but outside of the office close to where we live. It's fairly natural for people um, working in sales, but not so natural for your average software engineer. You also can make explicit time on your calendar to schedule regular virtual coffee cups with people that you meet with um, that you meet with regularly. You can make special interest groups easy. And with special interest groups, I really mean something like, I've got a cat. Do you have um, recommendations on, on cat toys or stuff like that? You can also plan for social time and serendipity by using chatbots to connect people randomly to each other like we do in Slack for InnoSource Commons. Um, you can make ex explicit time before and after meetings for socializing. We already did that when we were back in the office. Somehow some of these um, patterns dropped when we moved to remote first. What we can do as well is connect people randomly after a workshop is over. Just put them in breakout sessions where they can chat. Essentially provide time and space for breakout sessions where people can exchange ideas. Make sure that for each meeting people can check in and can check out. Just give everyone a voice and make sure that some of those sessions, if they get larger, they get facilitated and moderated as well so that everyone gets the same chance to get on the mic. 
and essentially make it easy for people to laugh together. What we did at Apache for board meetings was that everything that was um, said verbally was on record, but there was, off, was, a, was an option for off the record communication in a chat channel, essentially for giving tiny little hints to the moderator, but also to share just silly jokes and to lighten the mood in the meeting. One word of warning, so when you add synchronous communication to the mix, you still need to make sure that decisions continue to be made where everyone can see them and can participate, which means in a written form. And with that, I'm pretty much through. Um, I would like to send you over back to question five, where you can share your name if you have some ideas on how to facilitate trust building in your inner source teams and how those can be translated into a inner source pattern. And with that, I'm happy to take questions. <laughs>